So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. In our last video on Osinachi Wachuku, I gave us major comprehensive updates regarding the case, the trial, the autopsy, and every other thing that had come up. I revealed that the National Hospital at Abuja had released a comprehensive autopsy report on what caused the death of Osinachi. And according to that report, it was revealed that Osinachi died of one bilateral leg swelling, fluid in the sac containing the heart, tumor deposits in and on the heart, the lungs and the kidneys, for a massively enlarged heart and five fluid around the lungs restricting breathing i explained elaborately about how the trial began and how it progressed and the roadblock encountered when peter wachiko's lawyers the defense lawyers instead of proceeding to defend their case opted to file a no-case submission. I explained that that meant that Peter Wachiku and his lawyers are implying that he has no case to answer. He has no business in all the accusation. So instead of the trial to continue, the judge should fling out the case and discharge and acquaint him. That is the meaning of a no-case submission. And that was filed by Peter Wachiku and his lawyers. Now, in the interest of those who are just joining us, a good number of people have joined in recent times. In the interest of those who missed the video entirely or those that need some refreshers, I'll go ahead to insert a short clip from that previous video so it can bring us up to speed before I reveal this new major update. At this point, the Nigerian government, through the Ministry of Women Affairs, took on the case. Peter Wajuku was then apprehended and charged to court on a 23-count charge bordering on domestic violence and culpable homicide. He was to be remanded at the Kuje Correctional Facility and attend his trial from there. So the trial began May last year, 2022, and it commenced just as every criminal trial with the arraignment. Peter Wachiko was arraigned, all 23 counts charges were read to him in a language he understood and he took his plea. He pleaded not guilty to every single count. In other words, he insisted that he was completely innocent of all the accusations and all the evidence levied against him. I not the whole world because I've suffered a lot. Please. I've suffered. I've abandoned. What killed my wife is lungs, uh, cancer of the lungs, not even killed my wife. My wife? Cancer of the lungs is what killed my wife. What's in the too much cool? So I'm suffering for what, what I didn't pass to. What I, what I don't know. After taking his plea and after the trial begun, something really unexpected happened. One of Nigeria's biggest jailbreaks took place. On the 5th of July 2022, a coordinated attack on Koje prisons where Peter Wachuku was detained took place. The attack saw five people dead and almost 900 inmates released back to society. When news of this jailbreak made it out, a lot of people were quite worried that Peter Wachuku had escaped. In fact, many blogs carried the rumor that Peter Wachuku was amongst the inmates that had escaped from Kuji prisons. And as though to confirm this rumor, nothing much was heard about the trial of Peter and the Osinachi case anymore. But today, I will be bringing us with a number of updates that has happened since the Kuji prison break. One of the major updates that I would like to bring to your notice is that contrary to popular opinion, popular belief, and widespread rumor that Peter escaped when the jail was broken into, no, Peter did not escape. 
why he didn't escape is still unconfirmed whether it's because he didn't get the opportunity to or maybe because he did and didn't want to run that is still unconfirmed but the fact remains that peter is still held at Kuje prisons and he has been attending his trial from jail so another big update is that the full autopsy result not all the speculation that were being made last year autopsy has been carried out the results have been made public stamped by the national hospital in abuja and has been presented and tendered in courts despite this autopsy report said that there were no physical marks on her but what do you think about these causes of deaths do you think that despite there were no marks there had been some internal damage already done to osinachi from years of physical abuse do let us know what you think about this autopsy report and the details that has now been tendered in court so after peter wachiku took his plea the prosecution opened their case the prosecution are the ones that drag the accused person to court and it's usually the government yes a crime is a wrong against the government that is why if you for example kidnap somebody it is not within that kidnapped person prerogative to determine whether he or she wants to charge the case to court a crime is a wrong against the government against the state that is why in criminal cases you will see the case being stated as the state versus Okunkwo, the state versus Bibiana, the state versus Barbara. So the case is usually taken to court by the state, by the government, through the office of the Attorney General of the Federation. So the Attorney General of the Federation is the prosecutor. They are the ones that took Peter Wachuku to court and Peter Wachuku is the accused or the defendant. That is the terminology. So the prosecution called 17 witnesses, a whole 17 witnesses, to give their different accounts and different testimonies about what they witnessed between Peter Wachuku and Osinachi. And all their testimonies, all their evidences, all their accounts pointed to the same thing, the same abuse, the same trauma, the same torture, the same domestic violence they were overwhelming amongst the 17 witnesses we had several members of her family we had church members we had her colleagues we had a hairdresser we even had her tailor come out to give her own experience about what they saw with peter wachiko even osinachi's children also testified against their father in court you can imagine how sorrowful how heartbreaking it is for children who lost their mother to the cold hands of death to come and testify against their father in a trial that can even lead to his own death what trauma this is a very big lesson to women that say they are staying because of their children this is the result how much benefits do the children have to gain in all of this now so after the court heard the prosecution's case and the prosecution finally closed their case it became time for the defense to open up their own case now i'm taking my time to make this explanation because i believe that it is very important for us all to appreciate the steps in a criminal trial to know how far this case has gone and to know what is left before verdict is given i cannot assume that you all know these steps and I cannot leave you with the thought or the ignorance that this case has been swept under the carpet. No, it has not. So in the interest of the listeners, let me give a quick breakdown of the steps of a criminal trial so we can know where Osinachi's case is presently at. After an arrest and the police investigation and it is clear that a crime has been committed, the case is charged to court, right? The first step in a criminal trial is the arraignment, where the suspect is docked. He is put in the dock, a box in the court, where the counts, the charges are read to him or her in a language that they understand. After that arraignment, after the charges are read, then the next thing is the plea taken. So the accused person will take a plea, and the plea means a formal answer to all the charges, and this answer must be either guilty or not guilty. So Peter Wachko has been arraigned, he has taken his plea and he has pleaded not guilty to all 23 counts against him. So after this, we have the prosecution open their case. Don't forget that he who alleges must prove. 
if you are alleging something it is your responsibility to prove what you're alleging not the defendant's responsibility to refute your claim no the defendant is not charged with the responsibility to dismiss your claim it is the prosecution who is alleging that will open up the case to bring forward its proof and evidence so all criminal cases and all criminal trials always start with the prosecution going first so the attorney general of the federation who is the prosecution in this case has opened his case and that was when it called all 17 of these witnesses to give account of their testimonies of peter being a violent person against osinachi and when the prosecution is done presenting its case then it closes its case and then the defense can come forward to state their own case and the defense in this case is Osinachi's husband Peter Wachuku and his lawyers. So we have come to the point where the prosecution is done and it is now the defense. Now the defense has two options. The defense can either go ahead to defend itself against what the prosecution has alleged or they can go for what is called the no case submission. Now the no case submission is not a defense. The plea for no case submission is a request by the defense to fling out, to throw out the whole criminal charge, saying that from the evidences of the prosecution, from the allegation of the prosecution, it does not have any reason or right. The criminal charges are lacking in merit. There is nothing substantial to convict the accused person like he is innocent. The prosecution are talking gibberish and that the accused person should be discharged and acquitted and made to go home. Now those are the two things that can happen. The defense counsel defending the defendant or the defense counsel putting up a no case submission. And in this case, very surprisingly, Peter Wachiku and his lawyers tendered a no case submission saying that there is no case against him. That all of these evidences are nonsense. That the autopsy does not support the allegation of domestic violence and that the court should release him. So that's the no case submission. So the court will hear this no case submission and if it truly feels that there is no case against this accused person, it will strike off the case and discharge Peter Wachuko. But if it feels that there is a case, it will strike off the no case petition and order for the trial to go on. And then the next step will be for the defense to open up its own case call its own witnesses which of course will be cross-examined by the prosecution and re-examined by them and after the defense is done with its own case it will close its defense then there will be the final address by the two of them something like a summary a written address okay the prosecution would round up its case with a final address and the defense will round up its case with a final address and the next thing will be judgment. After judgment and sentencing, there are two different things. Judgment is a pronunciation of guilt or innocence. The judge can say, okay, this person is not guilty or this person is guilty. That is judgment. Then sentencing is the punishment that comes after judgment. So when judgment is, for example, not guilty, the verdict would be discharged and acquitted. But if the judgment is guilty, then the sentencing can be, okay, you are hereby imprisoned to 14 years imprisonment or the death penalty or this and that. That is the sentencing. So these are the steps. I hope you understand. If you do, please drop in the comment section so I can know that you understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to break it in very simple terms so everybody can be carried along. So you see where we are now on this case. For those who have been asking me, DMing me, mailing me, dropping in the comment section, where are we on Osinachi's case? Has it been swept under the carpet? Has it been forgotten? No, it hasn't. We are on the case. And the court has adjourned the case to the 26th of September, where they would hear this no case submission, this no case application by the defense and determine whether there is indeed no case against Peter Wachuku or if there is in fact enough evidence against him, they will strike off the no case submission and the trial will go on. So yes, the no case submission filed by Peter Wachuku and his attorney has been heard in court. While arguing the no case submission, 
Peter Wachiko's lawyer, Barista Aliu, had argued that the evidence of the medical practitioner brought by the prosecution, rather than implicate Peter, even exonerated him. And that the autopsy report clearly shows that he had no hand in his wife's demise. He argued that Osinachi's family was trying so hard to implicate and frame him up and that Osinachi's children who testified against him, against their own father, were tutored and groomed to testify against him in court. So they proposed that since all these accusations are false and baseless and do not tie him to the deaths, he should then be discharged and acquitted and allowed to go back home. The Honorable George Iheme Wosu heard the whole argument, sat through the case, and at the end of the hearing, it was held by the Honorable Courts that Peter Wachuku indeed has a case, a very, very strong case to answer. Hence, the Honorable George took that application for a no case submission and flung it out of the court's window. The court held that the prosecution has established a strong prima facie case. A prima facie case is like a surface case based on first impression. So there must be a prima facie case before a case can go on in court. So it doesn't have to be proven beyond reasonable doubt at that point, but there should be a ground, a reasonable ground for that case to be hinged on. And the judge has held that the prosecution, through the attorney general, that is the people that are suing for Osinachi against Peter, have proven that there is a substantial, a substantive case for Peter Wachuku to answer to. And that all the evidences tendered, both by Osinachi's relations, by her children, by her colleagues, the tailor, there were at least, was it 17, almost 20 witnesses to corroborate the 23 count charges that was brought against Peter Wachuku. The judge has held that these evidences are compelling enough for Peter Wachuku to stand up and defend himself instead of chicken out by filing a no case submission. The judge has now directed that Peter Wachuku and his defense should proceed and open their defense. There is no running away here. <laughs> the judge went ahead to adjourn the case for the 22nd of November for the prosecution to open their case. Don't be alarmed. Some people might say, oh, adjournment, adjournment, these adjournments are too many. Adjournments are parts, they are a normal part of a legal process, of legal proceeding. In fact, if there are no adjournments, the defense can even file a claim that the trial was not fair, that they didn't get enough time to prepare. So now that the judge has dismissed that petition of no case submission, she has given them one month to then go back and prepare their defense. Because when the court reopens on the 22nd of November, they will have to present their defense. They will have to counter all the evidences that have been given by all the witnesses brought in by the prosecution. So it's hard work. It takes time to do that because they have to go step by step reviewing all medical records submitted and forming a very concrete basis for their defense. It's part of a trial. In fact, one month adjournment sometimes can even be said to be fair. Some adjournments take even much longer. I'm sure the court is trying so hard to expedite action on this particular case so that judgment can be given soonest. So I believe that this is good news. This is the right step in the right direction. I think it's such exhibition of nerve for him to even think that there was no reason for him to even be charged at all with all the overwhelming evidences of domestic violence. So yes, just as many of you believe that Peter Wachku indeed has a case to answer, the court also believes so and has compelled his team to begin with their defense. So the question is, what next can we expect? So what we can expect next, as the defense, Peter Wachku and his lawyers open their defense come 22nd of November, is one, they will bring witnesses to 
counter the claims of the prosecution and dilute the evidences that the prosecution's witnesses have submitted. So they're going to bring their own witness that would prove that Peter Wachuku did no such thing, did not cause the death of Osinachi. They would bring their own practitioners that would interpret the autopsy results differently, showing that there was no link or correlation between that result, the eventual cause of Osinachi's death, and Peter Wachuku. So they would do all they can to dismiss the claim and the evidences that have earlier been submitted by the prosecution. That is what is going to happen next when the defense opens this case. So the defense opening this case is all about, as the name implies, defending the accused, watering down the validity and the weight of the evidences of the prosecution. They can even go ahead to cross-examine the prosecution's witnesses. So anybody that testified for Osinachi can be called for cross-examination by the lawyers of Peter, including his children. So if his children claim that their father did this to their mother, did that to their mother, Peter's lawyer can call on their children to question them and water down their own evidences. Can you see court cases are very crazy. That is why we keep on preaching every day that it is best to avert these kinds of occurrences. Children's lives get scarred in the process. So yes, they can call up fresh witnesses, they can cross-examine the prosecution's witnesses, they can call their own doctors, they can even demand another autopsy sometimes, if there are any gray areas. And after that, the prosecution, the attorney general here, the people that are standing for Osinachi, can then re-examine the witnesses. So if I am a witness and I testified for Osinachi, Peter's lawyer can cross-examine me to water down my testimony. Then my own lawyers can now re-examine me to further give light and life to my earlier testimony. So it's going to be a very hot battle. After cross-examination and re-examination, then of course we have the final addresses. In the American jurisdiction, this is when the lawyer appeals to the emotions and the logic of the jury and tells them how this guy has lived on a farmhouse for 30 years without issue, how he's a good guy, he contributes to his community. You know, that is where those arguments and points come up. But in Nigeria, we do not use the jury system. We use the single judge system. So your fate lies in the hands of one person, right? Right. So after the examinations, then comes the final addresses where the prosecution lawyers and the defense lawyers will give their final written address summarizing their case and pleading the court what they want from the court. After the final addresses are taken, then the judge will weigh all the evidences that have been provided and then give judgment. Guilty or not guilty, as Elia explained. Then after judgment, sentencing can then happen. Sometimes they come hand in hand. Immediately after judgment, sometimes some judges just pronounce sentencing, while some would wait and give sentencing on another day. But more often, it happens per pursue. So judging from how this trial is moving, I still have a strong conviction that by next year, we should have this concluded. By 2024, we should be looking at judgment and sentencing. And at last, justice for Osinachi. If the court finds it, that Peter Wachuku indeed played a role in her untimely and unfortunate demise. So as earlier promised, you know, when these cases come up, I don't just jump into it as a way of trend. I keep telling you that I will follow the case to the later. So yes, I want to reaffirm my commitment that my eyes and ears will remain grounded, fully grounded on this case and I will take us along as it unfolds down to the day of sentencing and judgment. And if anything comes up along the way, be sure that I will bring it to your notice. So guys, we have come to the end of today's video. Don't forget to drop your opinion, your thoughts, all that you feel down in the comments section. If you're watching and you're not subscribed or if you're seeing my face for the first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. Don't forget that you can become a member of my channel by clicking join down below there right under my name and show your commitment to support all the good work that is done on this channel. You can also join my personal channel at Neze Pepe Rempe, where you get to experience me up 
close and very personally. I'm going to leave a link to that down in the comment section pinned and right in the description box. So thank you once again, guys, for watching. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Nezevale. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.